Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to today's session. This is Scratch Track. So before I start, I'm going to have a recap of what we did yesterday. So yesterday we did exploring Scratch. We looked at the interface of Scratch, the different components that are available in the Scratch interface. So I'm loading my Scratch project so that you can see those events happening at the same time. So as you can see here, I have a cat and a dog as I've shown you before. So when I click on the green flag, my animals make sounds and they're able to talk. They're moving and they're also saying hello and some sound is also happening. So we call that parallelism, the ability of more than one activity taking place at the same time, okay? So that is what I meant from the codes I'd shown you. Now we're going to look at the next thing. So after we look at parallelism, The next concept we are going to look at so we are going to look at sequence after we understand events and then parallelism so the next thing we are going to look at is the sequence when we're talking about the sequence, you're talking about how do you arrange your code? The How do you arrange your code? If you're talking about, sorry. Yes, the sequence concept. So we're talking about the arrangement of your codes. So if you, when you're coding as we, we covered it yesterday, when you're arranging your blocks, you need to be very specific, arrange them in a sequence such that from one step they follow to the next step so that there's no confusion or you don't miss out some points you want to express in your project for example if you're creating an animation of a cat chasing a rat so we need to see where the cat is coming from then shows where the rat is coming from and where they're chasing each other so that step by step instruction of the blocks when you're coding is what we call a sequence so that it makes sense to the user so that the user is not lost or does not understand what your story is all about so the sequence is very important when you're coding using the blocks in scratch so that it your project at the end of the day it makes sense to them listeners or the viewers or the people who are going to use it. It has to make sense to them. So once you understand how you've already designed how they're going to, which step is going to start followed by which step. Another important blocks, we call them the control blocks. So the control blocks, they help you to, to manipulate your sprites or your backdrop so that you have the real life scenario, that manipulation, that repetition. So in these control blocks, most of them uh, have the repetitive aspect. They allow you or they enable you to be able to repeat an action. For example, if you want to walk from one point to the other, you keep repeating, stepping left, stepping right. So that continuous stepping, left, right, left, right, for you to be able to move from point A to point B, that is made possible in Scratch, when you're coding using Scratch, by using the controls or the repetition, the loops, what we call loops for, repeat, for repeating. So it allows you to repeat the action. 
more than once or forever depends with how many times you re you want to repeat so you can use the repeat you can tell it to repeat until it reaches the destination you want it to reach or you can tell it to repeat forever for example if you're singing you want the song to repeat until you finish singing you finish singing so once you understand how to organize your once you've arranged or designed and organized your your activities in which in steps which one will follow which one will come first which one will come second you need to use the event blocks you need to use parallelism and then you need to use the control blocks which in this case we were calling the loops or the iteration so they help you to repeat the action so that it it appears to be live it is not just stuck in one point so maybe we can I can give you examples of scenarios in real life where we use repetition like what I was saying when you're walking you keep repeating your left step you step left you step right continuously you keep stepping left right until you you get to your destination when you're sleeping you sleep continuously from the time you get to bed till morning then we see you waking up so that those are real scenarios so when you're coming up with your projects you need to relate with that what do you want us to see do you want us to see the cat chasing the rat continuously so you need to use this repetition or the control block so that they allow you to do the repetition if it is a song you want it to play until the end you tell it to repeat until it the whole project is over or your first part is over so always relate what you what you have the real life scenario with what you have in the scratch and then now you can be able to apply to be able to bring what you have in the idea you have in real life and be able to implement it in scratch using the different blocks and using the different sprites or background that you create or the ones that are already existing in scratch so another important thing you need to know when you're working with animation you need to understand your sprites very well so this is just a an image from scratch showing the different scratch different sprites and as you can see we have the different categories we have animal sprites we have people we have fantasy dances music sports food fashion and even the letters so when you're working with your sprites as you can remember yesterday you have the ability to create your own sprite you can just draw your own sprite it is very possible let me share with you that shortly so it is very possible for you to be able to to share your to be able to create your own sprites <coughs> so it is very possible for you to be able to create your own sprites so as you can see in my stage i have two sprites and as i was saying when i when i click on the sprites choose a sprite it gives me the different categories so i have animals if i want specifically to look at to deal with the animals i have people fantasy dances food if i'm talking about a restaurant or people eating fashion and even letters i can use letters if i want to create words so you have the letters and they are of different types so you choose what you want so the main thing of talking about sprites today when you are working with animation is you need to bring your characters into the scratch platform so that you can be able to use them so if you're creating us for example if you're animating a set book and your set book has maybe five characters you need to find a way to take photos of people to represent those characters or you take photos of those characters and bring them to scratch that is made possible by using the upload sprite so once you upload the sprite it gives you the ability to bring in your own sprite and be able to use it in your animation or your movie another thing you have the ability to draw your own sprites 
So in this area, it gives you the ability to draw your own sprites. So you can come up with your own sprites. You don't have to save them in your computer and upload them. You can draw them still in Scratch. So you need to know you have the ability to bring all your all your characters into the Scratch platform and be able to code them using the blocks to be able to do what exactly you want to animate or what you you intending to do. So that's all about Scratch, about sprites. Another important thing before I leave the sprite is the costume. So I'll click, for example, on this dog. My the dog that I have here. So as you can see on the leftmost corner of our Scratch platform, we have what we call the costumes. So if I click on the first one, which is costume A, we can see that dog. Costume B, we can see the dog has changed the post position. And then costume three, the dog is making some funny looks. So these costumes, they are very important when you are dealing with animation because they allow you to bring your characters into live. You make them appear live by changing the costumes. So once you change the costume, it looks like your characters are live. They are playing live. As you can see, as I switch those costumes, it is appearing to be live, like some action is happening. If I click on the cat, the cat also has two costumes. So you can see if I keep switching, it looks like the cat is walking. So you use the costume to bring your characters to life so that they look like it is a real animation happening. So if you're creating your own sprites, always remember to have different costumes for that specific sprite so that you can be able to easily animate your sprites. Yes. Then let's go back to our presentation. So that was, you need to know how to use the sprites, especially when you're uploading your sprites and when you're drawing your own sprite, make sure your sprite has at least one or two, at least two costumes so that you can be able to animate it. But if you, if it's a backdrop or a background, you don't need to have costumes. If you don't need to, you can just use, if it's a photo of your school, just use the photo as it is. If you need to change the different environment of the school, you need that to take the different photos so that you can show the movement from one position in your school to the next. So when you're uploading or creating your own sprites, people tend to ask why the sprites don't have costumes. Remember that time you're the one to create even the costumes for yourself. So remember that it is very important. So lastly, Now, once you're able to implement, so as you can see, these are different costumes. For example, this is a butterfly and it has three different costumes. So once you change the costumes, the butterfly will be able to be live and look like it is really flying. The same thing here, we have another character and you can see they have at least four costumes of them in different position of their dance as they want to dance. So costumes are important when you're doing animation to help you bring your sprites to look lively or live, be able to make action. So when you're able to change your sprite costume, when you're able to use the events to trigger action or communication or play music, and when you're able to apply parallelism, in your different coding blocks so that you make action or create communication and then you arrange them in a sequence that they make sense to you and even to your target 
group that you wish to interact with your animation. We, now, at the end of the day, you'll be able to create now the animation, and then you can be able to record it so that you can have either a short movie or if it was a music video, you can be able to record it and show us the music. If it is a comic short, maybe people doing comedy, you can be able to record that and much more once you're able to apply all those things that we've handled today. And then another thing I need you to know is that animation can also be pictures, just pictures plain, but those pictures are portraying some information. For example, you could show us the different pictures of maybe a disease symptom, the different symptoms, and at the end, the disease we're expecting to see, to, to know from those symptoms, or for example, the different stages of diseases, so that once we see the pictures plain, we can be able to see, aha, uh -huh, this is maybe someone suffering from cholera or diarrhea or coronavirus or HIV and AIDS. So you can use animation to give information. It is not necessarily about creating cartoons or creating movies. So you can use it to bring out information about any topic or anything that you wish to educate people on. So think around that line. We are thinking on animation. Another thing that we must never forget is debugging. As long as we are coding, we debugging is a must. It is part of coding. When we are coding, errors come up. It's just like when you're writing your composition or your insha. At the end of the day, the teacher advises you to proofread your work so that you can check if you've, you've made any errors and then correct them before you forward your work for marking. So the same thing to coding. Most of the time when you're creating your project or when you're coding, you'll realize that you're making some some errors are happening like what i showed yesterday you might be wanting your cart to move facing forward but your cart is moving facing backward so those are errors it the, your cart is moving yes but is it moving in the direction that you wanted it to move in so we have those errors that you can come up that they come up while you're coding so sometimes you arrange your blocks wrongly what i was calling sequence if you don't put the right sequence you'll end up having events or action taking place in the wrong order. And that is an error and you have to debug it in coding. So some advice I would give you or a method I'll tell you to apply. When you're coding, especially these big projects that you people are working on in schools, it is advisable to put comments in your blocks. So you just right click your block as you can see what I've done here. There's a photo of a block I've right clicked and then it gives you an option to add, to add a comment. So in this comment, it allows you to tell us what is this block doing? Maybe this is a block for mo showing motion or movement. So you write a comment there that this block is supposed to make your character move from one point to the other. So that when you're debugging, you come and check, is your code doing what you expected it to do? So comments are very good. They help you correct errors easily when you have errors in coding. And also for other, in case you're stuck and you call a friend to help you, instead of explaining everything that you wanted to happen, just let them read the comments and they'll be able to understand this block you wanted it to move the character or this block you wanted it to play the sound all those so comments are very good especially when you're working with errors they help you solve errors easily so lastly i'll share with you a few projects two projects that have errors so that we can look at them and be able to understand what i mean by errors so we can do that shortly. So once you see this, even from yesterday sample and then today you see a sample in animation, you can be able to understand what we mean by errors during debugging, during coding, sorry. Errors while you're coding. 
So here I have a project. Let me bring it on board. So my first project. Let's look at it. It's about a, a flower. And this flower. Let me put full screen so that everyone can see. Yes, so this flower is supposed to grow and once it grows completely, it stops growing. But let's see what happens to our flower. This is a simple animation of a plant flower growing. And we see our flower keeps growing. It does not stop growing and in real life that is not the case. Once a flower grows and develops fully, it needs to stop growing and maybe start withering or shedding off. So this project has an animation error where the project is not able to stop once the flower has grown to full maturity. So another one, let me share another one. So this one is a birthday song with a cake and then we want we sing the birthday happy birthday to the person who has a birthday and then the, we give the person a chance to blow the candles. But let's see if our candles are going to go off or if we're going to sing happy birthday. Yeah, so we sang happy birthday to our friend, but the friend did not blow the candles. So we need to make this simple animation be able to, to once the song is over, the candles can be able to go off. So those are some errors. So you need to know, as we talked about it yesterday, you need to ask yourself the three questions. Why am I having an error? Amma, what is the error that I'm having? How did I realize that it is an error? And then how now do I solve it? So for example, with our cake, I'm finding it. I have an error because my candles did not go off. And how did I know that? Because I expected the candles to go off after the song. So that is how I noticed I have an error. And now, now I'm supposed to solve the error. So that is what we call bugs or errors in coding and you need to be able to solve them when you're working. Expect them. Don't get frustrated when you come across your programs not doing what they, you wanted them to do. Always find out what the problem is. How can you solve it? And also ask your friends. Ask your friends to help you solve it if you cannot solve it on your own so that you make it easy for yourself. And also you'll be able to solve the problem and be able to move to the to the next step. So those are the two projects I wanted to share. Then lastly, I'm going to talk about Scratch Studios. So when you're creating animation, we expect you to create more than one activity or more than one project. For example, if you're animating a set book, a set book has the chapters or the topics. So we expect you to animate every chapter after chapter and save them separately. So once you create this, sorry. Once you create these different chapters or dif different steps, for example, you say step one will be about this story and it ends here. So you need to code your project and then save it somewhere. So where are you going to save it? You can create a studio in Scratch and be able to save your work. As you can see, this is my studio and it has a few projects. So once I do chapter one, I save it and upload it on my Scratch Studio. Once I do chapter two, I record it and I save it and I upload it. So, so that at the end of the one month you have to create your project or the two months you have to work, you're able to create the different chapters and save all of them independently. Then you can be able to play them one by one and show them to your audience or the target people you want them to interact with this animation. 
So I wanted you to know that, that there's a Scratch Studio that you can use to be able to save your work. You can also create YouTube channel or those who already have YouTube channels, use that to be able to save your work chapter after chapter so that you don't lose your work. Because we know it is possible for your computer to get lost or be bro break down. All those things are possible. So always make sure you save your those different parts of your animation, either in a studio or in a YouTube channel. So I would like to handle any questions that we have. Please ask questions and let us know how we can help. So I can see Dorcas from Maasai Girls. How will you make the object produce sound, e.g. singing and also move? That is a very good question. So I'm going to share my scratch interface and then Dorcas you can see and watch what I'm going to do so that you understand how you can be able to produce sound and also move make movements. So let me share my scratch. I'm, I'm sharing my scratch interface so that I'm able to see how to produce sound. And I'm also with a colleague here, Belding from Iron also, who is also going to help with some of answering the question. So the first question of answering So here is my scratch and let me create a new one so that now once you have for example this cut and I want this cut to be able to produce sound. You go to on your on the topmost if you can see where I'm highlighting with my mouse with this where it's written sound. So once you go to sounds, we have options. Down here on the left bottom corner, we have the sounds icon. If you can see it, I've clicked on it. So it gives you options. You can upload your own sound. If you have your own song or music, I know some of you are very good at singing. You can see or record yourself talking and you want that sound. So you just record it and be able to upload it and bring it here in Scratch. You can also record it still here in Scratch and be able to record yourself and save that sound so that you're able to use it. Or you can use the sounds that have been provided for you. So for example, let me use the a song. A voice here. Yeah. Sound effect. So let me use, for example, that one. Then I come to my code. Now, when you in your code area on the far left side, we have the blocks. We have what we call the sound blocks. They are purple in color. Purple in color. So with these blocks. They allow you to play the sound that you, you chose. So for example, as I've dragged this one. So I've dragged the play sound. Mine, I chose which one? Gong. So play sound gong until done. So how do you want your sound played? You choose the blocks 
depending on how you want it. If you just wanted to start that sound or you wanted to sing until it's done. Until it's done, you can use all this. So many use this depending on exactly how you want to play your sound. Another thing down here still on the left bottom area there's a blue icon called an extension it has what we call the music if you add the music blocks they allow you to do the different music notes the tones how do you want it to play low maybe after a few seconds you you change the beats you can increase the beats so use this to be able to play your music for example if i use that one Sorry, let me use this. Yeah, that way. So if I play sound meow, then I play sound gong until done and I can play the note at a rate of 60 and maybe with this beat. So I can increase this. So you can be able to manipulate even the beats. If you want an instrument, if you want a piano, if you want a guitar, you can be able to use also those different instruments. So you can use the music blocks and also the sound blocks to be able to make your sounds and remember the events they have to be there has to be an event for the action to take place for it to trigger these sounds or this music to play i hope i've answered your question Dorcas. and then the other one is about movement So I'll have Belden reading the questions. So that we can be able to answer them. Okay, so the next question is from Jonis Muamino from Shimbo Secondary. Is it possible to add more sprites that are in line with our subject areas? in this case chemistry or mathematics so it's possible there are available sprites in the costumes sorry uh, when you click on the sprites you'll find the available sprites that we have in case you don't find a sprite that is relevant to your project just take a photo of the sprites that you have add it to the costumes upload it and use it in your project so in case you want something to do with chemistry, you can go to the lab, take pictures of the lab, upload it, add it to your project. If you want something to do with mathematics, which you can't find from the available sprites, just take a picture, upload it, add it to your project. Yeah, I hope that answers you. Feel free to take photos of uh, the relevant sprites that you feel are useful for your project and add them. Okay, thank you so much, Belden. So, and there was something also on movement, so maybe I can add a little on that, as you can see on my screen. So if I want to move my sprite, you go to the motion blocks. They are blue, uh, the light blue color. Yes, the first block, motion. So you use either move or blind to be able to move your, your characters. You can even go to random position. So your character is able to move from one point to another randomly. You can even tell them to go to a specific position. I believe you understand the X and Y axis. So you can be able to instruct your sprites or your characters to go to a specific position on the X and Y axis axis and you can tell the position from this angle if you look here where we have the x on the stage just below the stage where the sprites are we have the x and the y axis so they're able to tell you the position once you move the sprite it shows you the position of that sprite so the motion blocks is what we use for movement so Belden can take us the next question mm -hmm. The next question I got is from Meta Mayo. 
How can you make an object moving forward to reach a point and get back? And I think Celia has answered that. Or uh, if you still need more insights, you can just chat us so that you can answer it. Uh, maybe to add on that. So to add on that, so if you want them to go to a specific position and once they reach there, they come back, you use the direction. So for example, I can use this one. Point in direction, as you can see, when I click here, it gives me the direction either north, east, south, west. So you use the direction, the compass direction that you study in geography. Is it geography? Yes, geography. To be able to move forward and back. So use the directions or the motion blocks. Maybe you wanted to specify it to move to a certain position. You can use, uh, when you go to the motion side, you can get glide to a particular position and then you specify. You specify where you want it to glide to. For example, at this point, I have my sprite at this corner. So I have the X coordinates down here and the Y coordinates also down here, you can see. And then if I want my sprite, when it reaches this point, it does not move further. So I can specify it to glide. Sorry for that. So I can specify it to glide to this particular position where the X coordinate is 218. So I'll change my X, my X to be 218 and then my Y to be 100 and then my Y to be negative uh, 119. So in this case, when I have when my sprite moves to this position, it won't go beyond that. So when I click this green flag, suppose my sprite was in this position. Yeah, let me just move my sprite. So suppose my sprite was in that position and then when I click the green flag, it glides to the position that I've specified it. So that is how to make your sprite move to a particular position. I hope it's answered now. Yes, yeah, so you can ask more questions so that we help you. Yeah, so work on the blocks, look at the motion blocks, look at the event blocks, look at the control blocks as I've talked about them. We even have the looks, so the looks allow you to, if you want to make conversations, to talk, to change costumes, how you look, to appear. To, we say the costumes, they help the sprite seem to be live. So look at the different blocks and anywhere you're stuck, let us know. You can always inbox us on chat so that we can help you further with your projects. And feel free to share your projects with us so that we help you where you're stuck or where you need help. Let us know so that we can help you. As you continue with the Scratch exploring into different projects that you can work with in Scratch. There is another question from Paris, Masai girls. Uh, how will you know that your op how will you know that your object have an error? I suppose this one is your project has an error. So in in programming, we call errors as bugs. So if you want to know that your project has an error, for example, in my case, I have this cut sprite. Suppose I want the cut to move to the left side. And then when I click on the left button, it turns upside down. So let us let us just give you an example of, of how an error looks like. So suppose I want it to move in a reverse side and then instead of just turning and moving to the left, it turns upside down. So in that case, I have an error. 
So that is how we have to rectify the error, which we call debugging in this case. So I have to ensure that the cat, when it when I move it to the other direction, it moves when it's uh, upright, because in normal situations, cats don't move in an upside down environment. So I have to ensure that it's a, a real, something that people can relate with, not uh, some fiction that uh, does not make sense, yeah. So if, if, if you design a project and you want it to do a particular task and it does not do that, then in that case, you know that your project has an error, which you call a bug. Yeah, thank you so much, Belden. Yeah, so you realize there's an error once what you want to happen is not happening, okay? So it can even be the size of your sprite. Maybe you want it bigger. So it's up to you to what you want, then what you're getting. That's how you know there's an error. So someone else is asking, customizing the sprite so that you come up with a project relevant to the subject area is a challenge. Okay, this is John's memo. So we said, you can either draw your sprite or you can take a photo of it and upload it in the Scratch program so that you're able to use it. So try to overcome the challenge by either drawing. I know students are very good at drawing and also taking photos and uploading them in Scratch so that you're able to use it. So I hope that will help you solve your challenge. And uh, if you want your, your sprite to be animated, ensure to take pictures in various points of motion. So if you want it to do an activity, remember you are going to upload a photo and you have to animate that photo to do something. So you have to take various positions of your sprite. If you want to demonstrate students doing an experiment, take, take their photos in each and every statement so that when you combine them, it can come out as a video or as an as an animated concept. I, I think that is answered. We have one that we skip. Sorry, Metamaya. Is it possible to control a character on the stage as in a game? Yes, it is very possible. In the events, in the events, we have uh, various in the events, we have various various uh, events that are specified. We have the first one when green flag is clicked, when space key, and in space key there is a drop down, so you can animate your, you can control your characters by pressing any key. We have all the letters of the alphabets in the keyboard. You can say that when I press one, the sprite moves like this, or the game starts when I press the up key, when I press, yes, it is possible to control a character as in a game, the way you, you're going to code it too. We also have uh, when the backdrop switches, you can tell your, you can tell the character when the backdrop switches maybe to night, the character should do this and this. It's very possible to use, to control it in a game. Oh, thank you, Jonas. Jonas has said that it is well answered. And then uh, we have uh, customizing your sprite. That one has been answered. Thank you. Feel free to share your questions with us. Tell us how far you've gone with your projects, the challenges you've encountered, so that we can support you to bring the best that you want from your projects. Yeah, so thank you. And if you feel you need more explanation, just keep asking. We'll be able to respond. Yeah, and yeah, as she said, let us know if you need pro help with your projects, especially where you're feeling here. I'm really having a challenge. We are here to help you or give you options that you can use. And remember, when we were talking about bugs yesterday, sometimes we, as we always say, we have diff many ways of killing a rat, yes. So there are many ways of solving the same problem. So you could be having the same problem, you're trying to solve it in only one way that you yourself, you know. 
but sharing with your friends or sharing with us will give you other ways that you can be able to solve the same problem. So please share and open up. have more questions we can wind up the session but just feel free to ask the question and if you need a you need to to, to listen again to what we've covered today just still go back to the link you'll be able to get a recording of what has been shared today so that you can maybe understand where you didn't understand well or remember a concept that was shown. So you can always go back to the link and be able to see the recordings. So thank you so much for asking questions and listening to us for your time. We are happy also from this end. And yeah, thank you. And let's build in us something to conclude. Uh, thank you so much for attending this session. I hope it's helpful and it will help you in your projects that you'll be able to create uh, the projects that we need that we can solve problems you face in your communities. And if you have any questions, we are still available to support you. Just feel free to talk to us and we'll be there to support. Thank you and bye bye.